Hello, everyone. Now, church, today I'd like to share some things with you about just my personal experience and my walk with God, some of the things that I know how the enemy attacks. And faith. Faith, I believe, is the hardest thing to have because it is definitely something that you cannot see. And you have to deal with the flesh. That flesh is a part of this world. And haven't you noticed there's not anything good in that flesh? It is so negative. I mean, when you're praying and you're standing in faith and you're believing God, you can hear that flesh talking. It'll talk to you, church. It'll tell you, are you sure? Do you think you were standing in faith? I don't know about that. I'm still feeling sick. Well, something's wrong because the flesh does not comprehend the things of God. It is part of this world, 100%. It is all the world. And you are trying to transform that flesh by the renewing of your mind. You're trying to bring that flesh out of this world and join it to God. And that flesh is fighting you every day. One day I prayed for patience, and I said, Lord, please just give me patience today to endure. And that was the worst day of my life. I did not win victory over patience. And then I remembered what the Holy Spirit showed me about Adam. In Genesis chapter 2 and verse 23 and 24, Adam went before God and because God created his wife, and Adam said, Shall a man leave his father and his mother and be and his wife be joined together? So he's telling God that the only reason he would leave him, because God is his father, Luke 3 and 38, and his mother is the city, in the book of Galatians chapter 4 and verse 26. So his mother is the heavenly Jerusalem, the Jerusalem which is above. Tinkerbell, well, pay no attention to Tinkerbell. You better be a good girl. So Adam tells God, and the devil hears it, because the devil hears everything we say. So the devil knew how to go after the man. He knew to go after his wife. That would be the only reason Adam would leave God and leave the city was for his wife. And it was the truth. We saw that. We saw that Adam loved his wife more than he loved God. So that devil is listening to you, church. The other day I was talking to Preston, and me and Preston was talking, and we was about to talk about something that really bad happened in his family and really bad happened in our family. Uh, and the devil came after our family, and the Holy Spirit spoke to me, and he said, Be quiet, Donna, be quiet. Do not bring this up. Do not speak out loud of this. And I said, Why? He said, Because the enemy is listening, and he will try to attack you again. I said, Preston, stop! Stop, Preston, don't say nothing. And he said, why? I said, because you know what? God gave us victory in that. Let's don't go back over that thing that happened to both of us. And let's not dwell on that because that enemy will come back in and he will attack us again another time. So let's not bring it back up. Let's forget it. Let's leave it where it is in the name of Jesus. He said, okay, we won't talk about it. I'm telling you, church, faith. Faith is hard because you're warring against that flesh, and that flesh is warring against your spirit. The only part of you that is connected to God, it is not that flesh. It is only your spirit. Your spirit wars daily with that flesh because that flesh is part of this world, and that spirit is part of God. So it fights constantly every day, warring against each other. And that flesh is the most complaining thing you've ever met in your life. Boy, that thing will get to hollering when it has to suffer, doesn't it? It will get to hollering real loud. And when you start to stand in faith, it is negative. So we have to shut that flesh up. We have to die daily to that flesh. We have to try to kill that flesh off every day. Not allow it to have that victory over us. Because it waits. Have you noticed, church, when the enemy's attacking you? And he's coming after your marriage, and he's coming after your children, and he's coming after your church, and, 
in the multitude of counselors, their safety and the devil's trying to destroy that where you don't have any peace and you don't have any rest. I know I'm talking to somebody out there because I know the devil ain't just doing that to me. I know he's doing it to all of us. And I know, church, I know what I'm talking about. I, I'm talking from experience over here. The devil has done me the same way. And there's been many times that I said, I'm through. I'm tired. I want the devil to leave me alone. And if I got to stop preaching and I got to stop talking to people and, and, and if this is going to make uh, things in my family better and my husband's going to act right, my children are going to act right, then I'll just not do nothing and I'll just sit here. But I can't do that because my desire inside of me to preach is more stronger than my desire to quit. I'll tell you right now, church, my desire to preach this gospel, if I got to knock everybody in the head in my family, I'll knock them upside the head. Because I tell you what, I am not going to quit preaching, and I'm not going to quit teaching, and I'm going to continue to do what the Lord has called me to do, and I will not give up. No matter what that devil sends against me, I will not give up. I am more than a conqueror, and I am determined. But remember what Jesus said. Your enemies are of your own household. That devil uses our family members against this church because he knows you're not going to send them away. If it was your neighbor, you could tell your neighbor to go home and don't come back over here again. You're getting on my nerves. I won't talk to you no more. But you can't say that to your family because they're your family and you love them. So the only thing you can do, church, is to battle that flesh. Battle their flesh. Battle that devil for them every day. I tell that devil, I said, if you think you're going to take one of my family members, you better I'll think again. Because I tell you what, I'll come over there in the name of Jesus and I'll take my family. Oh, he ain't getting none of my family. I'll tell you right now, church, I don't know about you. You might just let him come waltzing all up in your house and take one of your family members, but he ain't taking my husband. He ain't taking my children. I'll go over there and fight him to the death. Do you hear me, church? He's not getting one of my family members. And that's what I know for a fact. And I keep telling this flesh, you're going to line up with the will of God. Or I'm going to drag you kicking and screaming. But you're going to line up with the Word of God. Because I don't know about you, but the spirit that God put inside of this old girl is a strong spirit. My spirit won't let me quit. There's been days where I've been so sick and in so much pain that I went from 135 pounds to 114 pounds. But I kept hearing the Holy Ghost telling me, Get up, Donna. Get up. And I would say, Lord, I can't. I'm sick. I'm in pain. I'm hurting. He said, get up, Donna. Get up. And when I got up out of that bed and I started moving and I started walking into that faith, I started stepping into that faith, I started seeing the manifestation of the power of God. Woo, glory. I feel the Holy Ghost all up in here. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Woo, I know y'all can feel the Holy Ghost. I know y'all can feel His Holy Presence. It is so powerful. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Church, I'm here to tell you, we're going to win that victory. Don't you give up on your husband. Don't you give up on your wife. And don't you give up on your children or your family members. If they're lost, church, go after them. I don't care if they don't want to hear it. I don't care if they're sick of it. Church, I got family members that come to visit me, and when I get my Bible out, they look like roaches when the lights come on. They're running so fast from all directions, I lock my doors. Yes, I do. I lock my doors, and I tell them, Oh, you here now. I got you now. Might as well sit on down, take your shoes off, make yourself comfortable, because you ain't going nowhere. That's right. I got them hostage. They're going to sit here and listen to this gospel. Amen, church. You're going to listen to this word. That's what you get when you come and visit me. When you come to this little old house over here and you visit me, you better know you're going to get to hear the word of God. You know, and, and Preston, 
I know if I go to Preston's house, I know I'm going to hear the word of God. Because that's how it is. Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. What is in you, church, is what's going to come out. Let's get full of the word of God. Let's get full of the love of God. Let's get full of the peace of God. Let's get it in us, church. And it'll come out of us. And you know what? You'll see that that flesh is weak. The Holy Spirit told me one day, He said, Donna, the flesh is weak. I said, it sure is. It is. And He said, if that flesh is so weak, how come you can't win victory over it? I said, hey, I'm your best friend. Remember me? I'm the one you love. He said, Donna, don't use the weakness of the flesh as an excuse of why you cannot win the victory. But use it as an advantage. If it is weak, take it as an advantage to overcome it and to win the victory. Church today, you and I, let's stand together as one, standing in faith, standing in love, believing God, taking Him at His word. Believe in Him to do what we ask for. We don't come to Him wavering in doubt. We come to Him in the boldness. Because we're coming before the throne of God. And when we come to Him, we're coming in faith. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God bless you, my dear precious friends. God bless you today. In Jesus' holy name.